Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Della's Voice. I'm so excited for my next guest. I've been waiting for a while to have this guest on. I know it's going to be a super fantastic talk. I'm hoping that it'll be super interactive. Uh, you'll come with your questions and comments, and we'll get lots of value from this guest. Um, Dr. George Grant is a best-selling author, an award-winning speaker. He's a scientist, philanthropist, researcher, specialist in integrative medicine. Dr. Grant has published multitudes of papers and presented many talks on this subject. And um, his loving approach to medicine has dubbed him the doctor with a heart. I first met Dr. Grant a few um, months ago at a workshop. What this demonstrates to me is that Dr. Grant keeps learning and growing. And this to me is a sign of a great man who values information, knowledge, and growth. Dr. Grant is a superhero in my eyes with many superpowers. I'm so honored to be speaking with him today. And so please help me welcome Dr. Grant on Della's voice. Dr. Grant, author, speaker, scientist, healer of mankind, superhero. Welcome, Dr. Grant. Thank you so much, Della, for the kind introduction. I appreciate it. It's very nice to have you here today. Thank you, Thank so, you so much, much for giving us your time. I'm so excited to have you here. This is gonna be fantastic. Yes. <laughs> So welcome. I just want to take one moment and um, um, make sure that I can see my Facebook feed here so that I can welcome people as they come on to join us. Sure. And so I want to welcome everybody. We're speaking with Dr. George Grant today on the topic of integrative medicine. And so with that, Dr. George, welcome. May I call you Dr. G? Yes, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome welcome thank you for being here today um so i want to start this talk by asking you to give us a little bit of a background um about you your story a little bit of heart to heart so you know where did you start how did you get here well i was born actually della in a family which was blessed with lots of ailments like my mother she had heart disease and she had diabetes and uh, she was taking multiple medications and she passed away in her early 40s i was 18 years young when she passed away mm -hmm. and uh, medication did not help her the bypass surgery did not help her and uh, I, you know at age 18 with no mom i was wondering is this the end is like i will never see mom again and i have not never seen my grandparents never seen them from father's side and mother's side. My dad also passed away, uh, you know, in early 60s. So I was wondering, what is this kind of genes I have inherited from both parents and grandparents? So I start to actually learn about prevention, not intervention in a very early age, like teen years. And I start to actually look into preventative measure because I don't want to be a victim. And um, thank God for the science called epi genetics which you can turn your bad gene off and turn your good genes on so based on that i just turned 70 uh, a couple months ago wow and i feel really young and i don't have any any disease i don't have any medications and uh, thank god I'm, I'm healthy so i want to share this to the world if you have bad genes inherited bad genes from one parent or both parents or both parents and grandparents like me then there's hope at, there's light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. we can follow the wellness stuff that we talked about at the academy of wellness.com so before we start i just want to make a disclaimer i'm not a physician i'm not a medical doctor i'm a scientist as you mentioned before and uh, we actually we say that we care we serve we educate we do not medicate we do not operate we do not irradiate we do not um, vaccinate we do not irritate it's it's, it's like uh, we basically use all natural approach to reverse disease and to basically help everybody to live till age 
of 100 like centurions and beyond. So if I can ever live 30 years, you know, from now to help more people, if God give me this time to to do that, then uh, you know we're gonna help more people and get them onto their wellness journey to age probably one 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 because somebody uh, in the states lived till age 110. So we now we looking at age 11. Okay. I mean, I, I'm with you. I want to live to, till I'm 120. Okay. Yes. But, uh, okay. With conditions, like I have to be healthy. Right. I, yeah. And I think, I think most people would agree that who wants to live to 120 if you can't take care of yourself, if someone has 100%. to take care of you. Right. I, I don't so, want to be I don't want to live long hooked up on a dialysis machine or or having sick medications or doing surgery. Mm -hmm. I think Ella, you're gonna live to age 111 just looking exactly like what you are today, healthy and young. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Dr. G. Because you have the energy, you have the vitality. I can even look in your eyes, I can say that you're on the wellness IQ score, is you're gonna be about over 80, 85. Oh, cool. Okay, we're yeah. going to talk about this, um, I, the, the wellness IQ, because it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so what I want to start with is this. Uh, what sets apart integrative medicine with, uh, from traditional medicine? I know you touched on some points, but let's, let's okay. go a little deeper. In traditional medicine, the physician actually um, learn how to fix any disease with medications, and if that fails with surgery. It's not the physician fault that they have this kind of narrow focus on pill for every ill, and if pill does not work, then we have a surgery, we refer them to a specialist. And um, so this is their training. This is their medical training in four years to get their MD degree. But uh, integrative medicine is basically focused on all of the aspect of prevention we believe that prevention is better than intervention, and we believe that self-care is better than crisis care. So in integrative medicine, we focus on both Western medicine and Eastern medicine and bring them both together. So if somebody come to me with lots of meds, we do not ask them to stop medications. That's not our goal. Our goal is to help them to cope with their basically challenge with their own medications and then give them herbal supplements, minerals, antioxidants, uh, lifestyle, fitness, uh, simple things that we talked about at the Academy of Wellness.com. You can go on because you've been at this website. And then if they go to the Wellness IQ, they're going to find exactly what they eat, what they don't eat, and what's eating them for stress. My first doctorate at the University of Toronto in 1995 was on stress. Stress Della, caused 85% of all diseases. Wow. It can bring in diabetes. It can bring in high blood pressure. It can bring in cancer. It can bring so many things. So we have to focus on stress. What is stressing us? What I found from my experience with 10,000 clients worldwide is that the their food that they eat and the lifestyle that they lead can cause the most stress in their life. We tend to select the food that are comfort food, especially during this COVID-19 crisis. People tend to eat the food that is... <laughs> not so healthy and that can bring in not only imbalance in their body because as you know wellness is balance illness is imbalance so i want to bring him back to balance because the biggest complaint right now i have in the past four months four and a half months an anxiety sleep problems stress bad eating and weight gain the average person gained about 10 pounds in the past four months so oh now my we gosh, yes with... i i yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they go and, and seek comfort food, not the vegetables, not the healthy seeds, healthy nuts, healthy, you know, fruits, all of the stuff. They just go to comfort food, the fast food. Now, fast food brings fast illness. All of the stuff that we eat from the fast food is not really healthy for us. It does not bring wellness. It brings illness. I had somebody actually was referred to me by one of my co-authors. Uh, he was actually admitted to Sunnybrook Hospital with 99% clogged arteries. I do not work for Sunnybrook. I'm not a cardiologist. All I did is just went to see him based on my friend's advice to see exactly what is his situation, if we can do anything with his 99% clogged arteries. When I asked him, what do you eat? He said, nothing, doc, just uh, bacon and eggs and uh, and uh, just nothing. I said, is it like once a week you eat bacon and eggs? He said, no, every day. I said, you've done this for one year, two years? He said, no, for 27 years. He was over 80 and for 27 years, he ate every day six strips of bacon three eggs fried in the bacon fat, and he had 99% clogged arteries. Now, I'm not saying that 
they did not ask him at Sunny Brook about what they eat. They did, but they actually told him maybe reduce that to one strip of bacon. I do not recommend that because if you have 99% clogged arteries, I do not recommend any bad fat. I do not recommend any fast food. In fact, I do not recommend any kind of bad fast food But if you have 99% clogged arteries. He gone through two bypass. He had gone two stents. He has taken 28 meds. And he still have angina and tachycardia. He still have some chest pain. Anyway, so I, when I told him to, can you stop the bacon, he started to cry. So I have somebody who's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have to kind of do some counseling. I said, okay, okay, uh, you know, you don't have to, to stop the bacon, but make it once every week, once every two weeks, not every day. And luckily, I was able to convince him. And he said, what's the alternative to bacon? I said, porridge, oatmeal. You can have any kind of vegetable. Like, there's so many things that you can have for breakfast. Bacon is not the only thing. But he said, no, I just like the smell of bacon. I like the taste of bacon. I said, okay, sir, if this is what you wanted to do, um, you, you're on your own. So I took my lab coat off and I went, I said, okay, come back. I'm going to eat your stupid porridge. I'm going to drink your water because he was drinking <laughs> porridge. I said, you cannot drink soda when you have diabetes. He said, no, 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 doc, I drink diet soda. I said, actually, diet soda is the worst for diabetics because that's where they his full sense of security here. Anyway, so I started to explain to him that, that drinking water, he said, I don't like water. I said, sir, we got to go back to basics. Our body is 70%, 72% water. We need to drink water. We need to hydrate. And he said, how many glasses? I said, about 10 glasses per day. He said, oh my God, I never even drank one glass per day. He was drinking soda, diet soda, that is. And he was drinking juices, commercial juices with high fructose corn syrup. And he has diabetes, like seriously. His blood sugar was over 15. His hemoglobin A1C was over 12. And it's supposed to be under 6.5. Okay, so wait I, a second. Because yeah. I got to say, I mean, when you're talking like this, it's like, <clears throat> I, I, I got to wonder, well, you have all this information. Yes. The reason we are in so much trouble is because we don't have this information, right. Dr. Grant. Right. right? right. So, so, of course, malinformation is malnutrition, yeah. right? Exactly. Yes. Yes, because um, we have to educate. We have to hear the public. So when you have diabetes, you have to control your blood sugar, your fasting blood sugar, and something called hemoglobin A1C that the physician do every three months to test your average over three months period. His hemoglobin A1C was in the teens. I think it was 12 or 13. It's supposed to be 6.5. So it was double the normal. Wow. Yeah, he was taking three medication for diabetes, three medication for blood pressure, three medication for you know the arthritis and the blood thinner and all of the stuff anyway to make the long story short he agreed to actually eat that porridge and eat the vegetables and drink the water in nine and a half months he was 50 percent open in his arteries with no bypass and no stents and from hospice from hospice admission to almost like dying in three months to living to until today this was 1998 he's still alive today you know it's he actually is reaching now centurion wow. and, and he's healthy he walks a mile a day he does not touch any of this bacon like to convince him to stop the bacon was a miracle to be honest with you, that was the hardest thing for me to do to stop him to eat the fast food and the easily comfort food and the thing that smells and tastes good for him and then he started to eat the stuff that I recommended which did not uh, taste good like porridge and oatmeal and all of this stuff okay and then i told him to change all the cow's milk to almond milk because of the high fat content and so on. And then the problem with casein, and the problem, which is the milk protein and lactose, which is the milk sugar. So he stopped that and he switched to almond milk and he switched to sometimes coconut milk. And then he changes, he actually lost weight. He released almost like 20 pounds in the first year. And then he's now living healthy. And he tell everybody about, you know, how we helped him to go from hospice to become centurions with no bypass, no stents, and no symptoms of any... By the way, his hemoglobin A1C now is 6.8, which is normal. His diabetes is normal. The doctors just scratch their head and say, "What? Is, what is that? All we've done, basically, is there's nothing magic about this, Della. It's lifestyle medicine. Yes. LM, and integrative medicine, IM, and, and FM, which is functional medicine. If you combine IM with FM, LM, again, IM, integrative medicine, getting the best of both allopathic and naturopathic, and then all of the Western medicine, Eastern medicine. We never asked him to stop any meds. He was still taking the meds. He, he was actually reduced his medication by own cardiologists and his own physicians. I did not uh, be, became part of that. And then he actually, they were so surprised. Uh, he's now actually very healthy. 
And one day you will meet him and then he will tell you his own story himself. Okay? Oh, I hope so. You know, I got to say, because I mean, you're, you're so right. Taking medication is not fun. No. Nobody likes to take medication. Nobody I've met likes to take medication. And when people uh, start eating better and changing their lifestyle, they're happy about the fact that um, they are now on less medication. That's part of their success, right? My victory, my non-scale victory is that Correct. I'm now off my medication. I it, think is not, it is not that we are against medications, Bella. It no, is not that, it. It's not that we're against the you know, drug company or anything like this. It's not that. It's every medication produce side effect. So if you are on two meds, you have double side effects. Let's say that you're taking something simple for cholesterol, like uh, statin medication for, for Zocor or Lipitor or Provocol, some, something like that. So doctors do not have time. Unfortunately, their time is so limited to tell the patient this medication sometimes can destroy something very essential called coenzyme Q10. CoQ10 is so important for the liver function, kidney function, heart function, memory function, the brain. So important. Then when you take statin, you have to watch for fatty liver. Now, if your liver becomes fatty, it cannot metabolize all of the toxins in the body. As a result, the gallbladder then takes the brunt of the fatty liver. It becomes fatty. So they need sometimes gallbladder removal because it cannot function, cannot produce any more bile. Just for taking one med. Now, imagine now if you combine statin for cholesterol medications with hypertension, high, high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma medications pain medications like okay why would anybody take more than one or two pain medications like narcotics because these are addictive medications it's really and the side effect is enormous i'm a pharmacologist i'm a toxicologist i published 250 papers i have three doctorate degrees so please don't argue with me on any side effect of medications because i've studied that please okay if, if you want to argue with me first study my bio for the past 40 years i've been doing this for four decades before you were born bella okay so, well, <laughs> <yes>. okay <laughs> so i've been doing this for 40 years so i'm not just graduated like last year or 10 years ago so basically prevention is better than intervention so mm -hmm. let's say that you come to me yourself with multiple medications we we'll try to work with your body to improve your diet to improve your lifestyle to improve your fitness so we recommend like brisk walking three times a week. We recommend that to normalize your diet. Eat breakfast like a, a king or a queen. Eat lunch like a prince or a princess. And eat supper like a pauper. Most people actually do the opposite. Yeah. We skip breakfast. And lunch is kind of, you know, fast food. Or Tim Horton, you know, the coffee double-double. And the stuff that has a hole in the middle. With his bagel or donut. And then their dinner is huge, huge dinner. No wonder we have problem with obesity. We have problem with diabetes which is diabetes plus obesity, which is becoming now globicity. It's a global problem. Oh my gosh. It's I love, I love of that. population have diabetes. It's not, it's not a Canada problem, Della. It's not US problem. When I travel to a Caribbean country, I have lots of clients in the Caribbean. They have more diabetes than Canada and the US. Why? Just ask yourself why. Hot country, what do they drink? Soda, uh, commercial juices. And they do eat so many fruits, which has fructose, that cause imbalance in their blood sugar. They do not eat that much vegetables because they, they do not actually grow vegetables in the Caribbean. Believe it or not, they export vegetables from either Florida or from other places, which is very expensive. But their fruits grown in their backyard. I've seen some clients coming to me with three, four mangoes and eat it at the same time. I said, what are you doing? I said, I like mango. I said, I like it too. But if I eat three mangoes, I'm going to have diabetes. I have family history of that. So you have to you have to watch for moderation here. You have to like seriously, <laughs> and they, they have all of this stuff. In fact, they have something called uh, coconut water, which is from coconut, which is healthy. But most of them do not drink it because it's a it's a local healthy juice. But they go drink the orange juice. They drink the local beer. They drink soda. Soda actually sold more in the Caribbean than in Canada and the US because it's a hot country and yeah. there's more ads for Pepsi and Coca Cola than than any other place. Uh, that you find in the Caribbean. You see, is there a connection between soda and, and diabetes? I would say yes, because it's, listen, high fructose corn syrup. I mean, in fact, if you look at the statistics of the diabetes, it was like this. And if you look at the high fructose corn syrup when it was produced in the mid 60s, it's exactly matching, correlate with the curve of diabetes. The higher the fruit corn syrup, the higher the juice, the higher the soda, the higher the diabetes. So I tell people drink water, 
and they say water doesn't taste good i said just put little, just uh, squeeze a little bit of lemon a little bit of apple cider vinegar just a touch of baking soda and a half teaspoon of honey it'll taste like ginger ale so Ooh, just try this i like that can you say that again <laughs> yeah just in, in one glass of water they put a pinch of baking soda a pinch of apple cider vinegar acv and a pinch of lemon juice like lemon water most people actually do that and just add apple cider vinegar and a baking soda and, and half a teaspoon of lemon uh half a teaspoon of honey sorry and or, it or, 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 or yeah. stevia is a natural oh, sweet that's so good. and that will hydrate you and then you should drink between um eight to ten glasses of water you should drink half of your body weight in ounces of water every day yes. so i am basically i drink about 10 glasses per day i'm fully hydrated so when i do the biofeedback test i test my hydration i test my oxygenation i test my ph by the way if you're fully hydrated if you're fully oxygenated if you're alkaline ph of 7.35 you cannot get cancer this is scientifically proven so you become cancer resistant you cannot get hypertension because you're fully hydrated and then you're drinking the proper electrolytes and then you can you, you can actually reverse diabetes if you stay away from high sugar content food the all of the food that give you high surge of spike when you eat those like you know of course the soda and the rice if you have a bowl of rice like this it's like having six snickers bar like white rice turns into sugar bread turn into sugar soda turns into sugar. things that we're not aware of that's why i tell people go to wellness I, uh, wellness iq at the academy of wellness.com see what you eat what you don't eat and what's eating you for stress once you determine that and you score above 75 percent you're actually disease resistant because you're following now the proper im fm lm integrative medicine functional medicine and lifestyle medicine i mentioned i already talked about lifestyle medicine about your food habits drinking habits i talked about integrative medicine the western and the eastern medicine what is functional medicine this is a new science that's actually studied the gut health our gut i see clients coming to me they have one ball movement every week and then they have problem of course with severe constipation and then bloating and all of this stuff so the gut is not healthy they do not have probiotics or prebiotics or they do not have they do not eat uh, kimchi or sauerkraut or all of this fermented food they do not drink enough fluids to give them the three ball movements when it's per day because three meals in means three meals out so i had this lady who goes to the bathroom once a week i said what is it that you eat she's eating the wrong food at the wrong time for the wrong reason <laughs> and then uh, her physician actually said don't worry some people are like constipated like this now i i totally disagree with that i don't think anybody healthy they have to go to the bathroom twice or three times per day i don't think anybody should go should not go to the bathroom more than that because if i actually go not go to the bathroom twice or three times i actually bloat so mm -hmm. I, I told her to eat lots of vegetables seven vegetables eight vegetables per day only one or two fruits and drink lots of water i cannot stress the importance of water Della. it's where 70 percent water so she started with this she had fiber and she had the probiotics and she had all of this vegetables and stuff she called me back and she said doc i'm having a moving experience I said, <laughs> from your apartment she said no i go to the bathroom twice a day but i want to imagine this Bella, <laughs> so once, week, once a week to twice a day like if this was you i, I know I'm, I'm sure it's not you but if this was you you go to the bathroom once a week to twice a day how would you feel personally oh that that's horrible feeling that's a horrible <laughs> like you don't have to have three doctors three masters you don't have to have any any information all you gotta do is just use common sense which unfortunately very uncommon yes like i told her uh, you have babies right you have you said yeah i said okay when you do the breastfeeding you change diapers right away imagine if your baby does not do any diaper change for a week she said no 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 they're gonna explode mm -hmm. said, that's what happened to you you're gonna yeah. blow like okay so we have to watch our eating habit elimination habits drinking habits stress habits because if you have too much stress you're going to eat the comfort food you're not going to be able to sleep properly by the way sleep is not for just rest it's to rejuvenate it's to repair it's to recover and by the way i recommend to my clients and myself too and of course you to go to bed at 11 o'clock no later than 11 p.m because at 12 o'clock our body meridians start to kick in so i have some teenagers they go to bed at two or three in the morning and they say oh don't worry i'll go i'll, I'll go to sleep till 
uh, till noon. Okay, so when they do that, <laughs> I, I should mention one of our colleagues, one of our co-authors that you know very well, and I'm going to mention this because I got his permission to, to, to mention this about his name. His name is uh, Robert J. Moore. He mm -hmm. used to go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, mm -hmm. until he saw me just only 10 days ago. By the way, Robert Moore go to bed now at 11 o'clock. He does not use fast food. He does not use any of this comfort food. Robert Moore on his wellness journey is feeling much better. You can actually talk to him in your next interview to see how much better. In only 10 days, Della, by sleeping better at 11 o'clock, by improving this diet, by eating more vegetables, by stopping eat of the, all of the comfort food. He actually confessed to me he had a pizza. You know what? If you have a pizza one day in, in a week, it's not a big deal. It's okay. It, it, one cheating day is fine. But if you eat pizza every day and KFC and... And the French fries fried in bad oil. I, I, You're in trouble. <laughs> I'm You're double in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> double and then soda. Like seriously, we have to learn how to drink our water. You know, we have to be hydrated. Yeah. To, uh, yes. Oh, here you go. Okay, good. Good good idea. Yes. Dr. G, we have so many questions. Oh, Except I would love that. Yes. I don't want to be talking all the time. Go ahead. First of all, we have so many people watching and I want to make sure we say hi to them for joining us today. Hello. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, I see some names here on Facebook. I see Robert J. Moore, Frida, my mama. Um, <laughs> we got Khosro, Azin, Rizwan, Rashid, hello, Rosemary, uh, Shazad, Nick, uh, Ruth, and Robert Verbery. Um, so, and, and a lot of different People who I don't see the name, Sal Salho is watching as well. Thank you so much. Okay, so they're they're saying hi to you. Okay. I have the very first question was Rizwan's question, so I'm gonna go to the top because yeah. uh, I don't. Uh, we have a lot of questions, so um, we'll we'll try and get to them. So Rizwan says, um, okay, hold on, I'm right here. Talk about coconut oil for memory enhancement or health in general. Highly recommended this one. Coconut oil is is very good oil for memory. Absolutely correct. And uh, talking about uh, memory, I'm currently doing a study, Della and Rizwan, on dementia. If you know anybody who have dementia, I'm doing currently a study for 12 subjects. I'm almost almost completed. The, the I only have about 10 right now. I got two more to go. So if you know anybody who have dementia, please ask them to contact me SAP because we're gonna be starting this study right away to help to reverse dementia naturally. In fact, there is no drug now prescribed for dementia or Alzheimer. So if our study is, is being successful, it's been approved, published in the medical literature, will be the first study in the world to document the importance of natural medicine, integrative medicine to reverse dementia naturally. And uh, I have done already a literature review, it reviewed almost like 1,000 pieces of literature, how to reverse dementia naturally. And I published this in a paper just approved last week in a major journals that will act as my literature review for my paper that's coming in about four months from now. So yes, reason one, coconut oil is actually the best oil to use on your salads, also for memory. And I love coconut oil. I love olive oil, extra virgin, cold pressed olive oil, also with the coconut oil, extra virgin, cold pressed. And also I like grapeseed oil. I love avocado oil. Do not use any other vegetable oil. Do not touch any canola. I'm sorry to say this because canola is the largest crop, Canadian crop in Canada, but canola is, it's actually used to be called rapeseed oil. Canola, for those who are scientists on the, on the call now, contains something called uh, C20, carbon 20, erosic acid that can cause problems. It can cause inflammation. By the way, I mentioned 80% of these come from stress which can cause inflammation. So if you do have inflammation, either in diabetes or blood pressure or pain, you have to avoid canola oil because canola oil is not recommended. And so is the, the mazola, the canola, the mazola, all of the other vegetable oil. Do not ever use, if you, if you ever use them, use them only cold, but do never fry anything with those oils because it becomes unstable, it produces free radicals and it becomes very dangerous. So when so inflammation, yeah. Sorry, but when you say inflammation, like uh, is arthritis part of that too? It is. Uh, arthritis is inflammation. Uh, dementia is inflammation of the brain. And uh, diabetes actually is a disease of inflammation. When you have in too much uh, insulin produced, it can cause inflammation. In fact, insulin is number one 
inflammation cause for people to have diabetes because if they are type 1 they inject themselves with insulin that cause inflammation it can cause weight gain it can cause uh, lots of other pain stuff when they come to us within three months they can reduce their insulin dependency by almost one third and they can reduce their oral diabetics medication like uh, metformin which i do not recommend by the way metformin has been a warned from cdc to can cause cancer and most physicians have uh, have read this information do you know what i know okay but that's the only medication for diabetes or galbiride or any of those medications so we try to uh, basically help them to improve their blood sugar fasting blood sugar and also and as i mentioned before hemoglobin a1c so that their own physician cut back reduce their medication by half or eliminate it within three to six months that's my mission to help people with diabetes i have so many clients with diabetes who actually have done that worldwide across wow. Canada, US and the Caribbean and Europe. Yes. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah. So anything else on coconut oil for Rizwan's question? If using it, Rizwan, that's why you look healthy, you look young. You look <laughs> that, my friend. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Rizwan, for the yes. Next question is from Shahzad. Uh, doctor, can you please explain different di difference between sugar versus sweetener? Why some, like monk fruit, for example, is better than others? Okay. What sugar, the scientific name for sugar is actually uh, fructose, which is fruit sugar, or sucrose comes from the cane, sugar cane, or beets. So this is sugar. Now, sweeteners, there are natural sweeteners and there's artificial sweeteners. I do not recommend artificial sweeteners because artificial sweeteners like aspartame or uh, any other artificial sweetener can have side effect. It can strip our body from all of the essential nutrients it can cause a false sense of security. People have diabetes. They say, I drink diet pop. It does not have any sugar. It's approved by the FDA. Okay. I did work for the Health Canada and the FDA and the CDC for 10 years in the early uh, 2000. And I asked my fellow scientists at the FDA, can you give me one reason why you approved aspartame? Show me the data. I'm a toxicologist. I'm a PhD or a PhD as well. And I, the answer I got, it was not scientifically uh, approved. It was politically approved. That's come from the FDA. I hope I don't get into any trouble having public <laughs> with this. I I hope that yeah, I don't I hope they don't kick my show off the air. <laughs> uh, but because, okay, now, if you take something for political reason, because the company said we need to have this uh, instead right. of the soda that's shown to, to, to can contribute to diabetes and so on. Uh, and by the way, I just want to let you know, Della, and to answer the question from the from your viewers, uh, Sharzad, uh, that uh, a calorie is not a calorie. A calorie is not, so soda company tried to convince us that a calorie is a calorie. Uh, sugar produced four calories per gram, a protein produced four calories per gram, fat produced nine calories per gram. Calorie is not a calorie. If you eat lots of proteins, if you eat lots of healthy fats, if you reduce your intake of sugar, calorie is not a calorie. It, it's a false sense. This is not even uh, deb debatable at this point. Everybody knows that. But uh, the soda company, Coca-Cola and this, uh, and you know, Pepsi and all of those companies in the big commercial, they say calorie is a calorie. It's not true. The calorie is not a calorie. Okay. So getting back to her questions, artificial colors and, and, and flavors are not recommended. Natural sweetener like stevia, like you mentioned, monk fruit, like uh, any of the other stuff, that's that's healthy because it does not produce any insulin. That it's like, and it they have zero calorie. So there's no calorie intake here. My, my favorite uh, uh, sweetener is stevia. I, I use this every day, so, stevia. People ask me about honey, if used in moderation, it's better, but if you use in excess, especially when you're diabetic, you have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. And make what, sure it's organic honey and pasteurized. What, is, what does moderation mean in using uh, Moderation honey? means like half a spoon, half a spoon per day. But half because I've spoon. seen some people using one tablespoon three times a day, that's already uh, gonna put spike on your sugar level, <laughs> which is, uh, because it has fructose. I mean, honey yeah. has fructose. Yes. But it yes. has other minerals from the bees and so on and, and in fact uh, it's it's better to have honey than sugar but again it's in very restricted moderation yes especially for people with diabetes yes thank you um next yes. question is also from shahzad what's the best way to balance our body ph <clears throat> the best way is to avoid acidic food because acidic food can cause acid ph it can lower the ph under seven among ten thousand clients 70 percent of them have a ph of 6.8 or lower you know, pH is like seven is neutral, under seven is acidic, above seven is alkaline. So the ideal pH is 7.35, which is slightly alkaline. And if you achieve that, you can avoid all acid foods, like the soda, the rice, the pasta, the sugar, the bread, 
the juices, especially commercial juices. Uh, now, you know, I mentioned all of this, people say what's left to eat. Yeah, there's lots left to eat. Lots of vegetables, which is alkaline. Actually, you can actually Google alkaline foods. It's going to give you a lot of things. So vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, all like some fruits are not acidic. Like avocado is not acidic. But if you eat high glycemic fruit, like grapes, you know, uh, like mango, which is very highly acidic, you gotta limit that, like moderate that. You cannot eat three mangoes or a whole, uh, you know, a pound of grapes in one day because that's give you a spike, right? But how many avocado you can eat? I don't think you can eat more than two avocado. It has a healthy fat. It has the healthy combination of all of phytonutrients. It's very good for us. Avocado, um, the berries. But again, watch when you make a smoothie, do not put two thirds fruits and one third vegetables. It's supposed to be two thirds vegetables and less than one third fruits because that gives us a spike in the morning. Yeah. So I'm glad that uh, Sh Shazad is as, uh, asking all of these healthy questions. Uh -huh. I hope to see you one day. I'm right here in, uh, in uh, Richmond Hill and also in Musaga. So, um, yeah. so go to www.academyofwellness.com and, and fill out that, um, that IQ, that wellness IQ, yeah. you know, yeah. who, knows, who knows what answers you're going to discover. I mean, just, I think knowledge is power. I want to say hi to more people who have joined yeah. us. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, Melody, Beverly, Nick, Lizzie, um, uh, Baman. Uh, Becky, hello, Becky. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Okay, so next question is, for type 2 diabetes, how do you help heal it versus just lowering your carbs? Excellent questions, Nick. Uh, glad to hear you. Um, for type 2 diabetes, basically, it's not just limiting the carbs, it's to increase complex carbohydrate. For diabetics, I recommend to eat sweet potato. So bake sweet potato and have it every day at 375 Celsius. And then when you come out of the oven, cut it and put cinnamon inside. Why? Cinnamon actually helps control type 2 diabetes and so is chromium. But when you combine cinnamon with sweet potato, which has high fiber and high phytonutrients, now you normalize, the blood, you actually eliminate insulin resistance. Diabetes is, type 2 diabetes is not a problem. The problem is when it comes into insulin resistance. When you get into neuropathy, when you get into pins and needles under your feet, when you get into the blurry vision, that's when it becomes a problem. But most people who actually have type 2 diabetes, and uh, I, I know Nick knows uh, Cheryl Ivaniski, and I know you've been on her uh, on her calls as well. She, she's my colleague. She's also my patient. Okay, so we work together in a diabetes summit. And then she has an amazing way to tell people type 2 diabetes can be, can be reversed and uh, type 1 diabetes can be improved because she's type 1, actually. She's insulin dependent. And guess what? 25 years ago, I came up with type 3 diabetes. Guess what? It's dementia. I was the first scientist in the world to, to coin type 3 diabetes with dementia 25 years ago at the WONM World Organization for Natural Medicine Conference right here in Toronto. And after this, all the scientists took this type 3 diabetes for fact. And now it is recognized type 3 diabetes is dementia. So when we deal about dementia, we have to control diabetes, type 2 diabetes, type 3 diabetes. And because most diabetics now are susceptible to dementia, later part in the life like when they get, when they come to my age 70 senior citizen right and <laughs> <laughs> they're more successful so and nick here i am my father had diabetes my mother had diabetes my grandparents have diabetes i don't have my blood sugar is 6.5 my hemoglobin a1c is 6.6 .6. i have no diabetes i control my diet so if you eat complex carb if you eat um, vegetables if you minimize the fruits two per day if you eat um, healthy nuts, especially walnuts, almonds, and if you have lots of seeds, particularly pumpkin seeds, shea seeds, uh, sunflower seeds, and if you avoid dairy, because dairy sometimes can contribute to diabetes, can contribute to diabetes. I don't want to get into argument with dairy because the dairy association always tell you to drink three glasses of milk per day and eat lots of cheese. Uh, okay, I kind of disagree with them on that because drinking almond milk make your pH alkaline, cow's milk make your pH acidic. Cow's milk is acidic. It actually forms mucus because of casein, the milk protein, and, and uh, the lactose, which is the milk sugar. So anyway, if you're very strongly on, on milk and you love to drink cow's milk, limit it to only half a glass or one glass per day and minimize the cheese. You can have actually have goat cheese, like feta cheese, instead of having the cow cheese. 
that's my opinion and i i, I enjoy that myself thank you thank okay. you awesome okay so um there was there was one question here again from shahzad it's another good question what do you think about keto diet dr green keto diet is is recommended if you know how to do it properly because uh sometimes i see people using keto diet to the extreme they add like fat to the coffee and they and they, they do like seriously like some some keto plans are I, I actually do not recommend bella anything to start with d diet because diet means you die so keto diet means you cut all sugar and you minimize the protein and then you just go for fat okay uh if you do the proper healthy fat then keto diet would be would be okay but if you eat bacon because it has high fat if you add if you eat lots of meat lots of sausages because that's what keto people do and if you eat too much greasy stuff like what keto people do to took too much fat and put fat in your coffee and so on sorry keto is not healthy anymore because that can cause clogging the arteries so you may actually lose weight but you can clog your arteries which one do you want so seriously i mean it's, it's a very difficult choice here but i prefer intermittent fasting kind of regime i call it regime not a diet so i have my breakfast at seven in the morning and my dinner at 7 p.m i just eliminate lunch this 12 hours cause something in our body called autophagy which is actually fasting that burns fat stored in the body and to control insulin resistance most autophagy happen in 16 hours to 18 hours but if you go for intermittent fasting combined with healthy keto then in 12 hours you can actually go through a partial autophagy to burn the fat and to live healthy thereafter so yes keto is healthy if you follow the healthy keto diet go to a wellness iq i have elaborated on that but if you're eating like three servings of meat especially cured meats uh, like now we're talking not just about fat we're talking about nitrite and cured meats that can convert to nitrosamines that can cause cancer i have 10 papers published on that don't argue with me that hot dogs and cold dogs <laughs> and bacon is safe it's not safe please don't argue me on that and don't give me the lecture that uh, our ancestors eat lots of meats and so on in moderation everything is okay you can have a small amount of steak like three four ounces not this big <laughs> can you show again what three ounces looks like because a lot three of ounces right done. here <laughs> this is the if people sometimes eat this in the restaurant i see them eating this in the restaurant yeah. I, like if you go to any uh, buffet which you don't have right now watch that serve what people put on their plate and they go not once not twice three times yes uh, like seriously where does this one go <laughs> and exactly. that's what we talk about acidity meat is acidic milk is acidic uh, juice is acidic uh, soda is acidic now we're gonna go to alkaline food like vegetables like nuts seeds all of the stuff that's healthy stuff now we're gonna go into the healthy alkaline diet if you're pH 7.35 if you're fully hydrated fully oxygenated and you do intermittent fasting and you do the healthy keto then you're gonna be living to the age 111 and beyond oh, that's, that? that's awesome healthy 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 oh. um so um so oh robert says good morning let's go have a pound of bacon and eat a cheeseburger wash it down with two liters of pop <laughs> what who's saying this <laughs> i will not write a book with this guy again <laughs> i know he's joking i know he's joking. no that's not robert moore that i know right that, that was the previous uh, water robert moore that i know yes. before uh, i met him in the guinness book of record and he was in <laughs> fact like what what he what he's saying right now but okay robert tell us share with the world now what you're eating now what is your breakfast what is your dinner seriously Let's go serious for a second. And how did you improve in the past 10 days since I saw you? Yes. Okay, Robert, go ahead. Let us know, Robert. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, we have lots and lots of um, comments. Um, so Ruth says it's very important to eat healthy foods to avoid type 3 diabetes. Yes. 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 Um, yes. Nick says, I love almond milk. Thank you. Great. Great. <laughs> um, Colleen says, I prefer oat milk and cashew milk. Are those OK? Be beautiful, hundred percent. Anything come from plant based, they're alkaline in nature. Any come, anything comes from the cows. By the way, I didn't even talk about the hormones added, the antibiotics added to the cow's milk, and I did not talk about pasteurization, HGST pasteurization process, which is all of the healthy stuff coming from the cow. If you if you own a cow, if you own a cow, and then you can have fresh milk from the cow, not pasteurized, no antibiotic added, 
and no hormones added, that is considered to be just okay, but not, not more than one glass per day. Okay, but if it buys commercial, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack from dairy association now, from agriculture people, but this is, a fa I'm talking about scientific fact, Della. I'm not, I, I don't have a new religion here to talk about. This is a, a scientific fact. Remember, I've done 250 papers. I've been working with Johns Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, Harvard, John, and uh, Cleveland Clinic. I'm not just like, uh, I've been doing this for four decades. Okay, 40 years. So, uh, please follow this advice. So, I'm glad that somebody actually using oat milk or cashew milk, almond milk, coconut milk. This is the healthiest milk you can have. By the way, you don't have to buy commercial almond milk. You can make it at home. You know how you do it? Put it in a yeah. blender, one cup of, uh, of almonds with four glasses of water, and then a little bit of dates, like a couple of dates to give it a sweetener, and, and uh, natural vanilla. You mix them. If you like the uh, the skin of the almond milk, you can have that. If not, you can peel it. And the next day, you have a beautiful almond milk. And you can also do the same thing with coconut and same thing with oat. It's It can actually have your own instead of buying commercial. So I'm not here to promote commercial stuff. We're here to promote healthy alternative to cow's milk and mm -hmm. healthy alternative to the cheese that we eat. And by the way, Della, I should tell you this. Some people are addicted to cheese because there's a chemical in it called casomorphine. Uh, okay, casein is, is a milk protein. When it's actually processed to the cheese, it can actually form a, a compound called, called casomorphine that actually has been shown to cause addiction. So if you know somebody addicted to cheddar cheese or the yellow cheese in the pizza or any other cheeses, this is considered actually addiction, some sort of addiction. They're going to actually have withdrawal when they actually cut the from the this cheese to the white feta cheese, to go cheese. They're going to have a, some sort of temporary withdrawal, like having to stop alcohol or to stop cigarettes. Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody talks about this. No. Like, I, I do not see anybody talking about this, especially in this COVID-19 era. It's very important to actually help to get the good immune system. I have never seen doctors now talking about how to prevent and how to reverse COVID-19. I was in charge of the, uh, I was a quarantine officer with Health Canada in 2002 with SARS, MERS, and with all of the stuff that the birds flew on, the swine flew, all of the stuff. I was in charge of that all across airport in Canada, across cruise port. I was in charge also of Norwalk virus when it came as a contagious thing in cruise ships. I was in charge, I was a quarantine officer then. I put on my website, academyofwellness.com, how to reverse and how to prevent COVID-19. Simple things. I do not see any physician or scientist talking about this. If you take 10,000 IU vitamin D3, if you take 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, if you take a zinc, 50 milligrams, and you use things like natural stuff like colloidal silver, oregano oil, things like any essential oils, that actually fight the COVID-19. And COVID-19 is not heat stable. It can be destroyed by heat. So if you combine all of this with something called thermotherapy that I actually uh, did the research on, and thermotherapy comes in a, one of those, uh, it's called the amethyst biomat. When you come and see me, I'll demonstrate this for you, Della. Okay. Thermotherapy destroy COVID-19. How do I know that? I published one paper in the, three months ago that thermotherapy destroy COVID-19. It's published and accepted in the medical literature. So I know what I'm talking about. So why don't we just use simple things like vitamin D3 and vitamin C and zinc? And instead of waiting for this vaccine that's supposed to be the savior to, to resolve this lockdown. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to talk about vaccination today because it's highly controversial. I don't want to talk about any of this stuff. Okay. All I want to tell you is this. If you boost the immune system, you can actually prevent and reverse COVID-19, SARS, or any other virus that existed or will exist because they mutate. So to, to form a vaccine for some, something you did 40 times or 60 times, it does not make any sense. I actually sent you a link yesterday. I'm not sure whether you yes, had a chance. Yes, you did. Yeah. Look at it. <laughs> the death from, from China and, and Taiwan is only like under 10. And a company, uh, a country with 24 million people who have like 10 deaths from the COVID-19 consider very low. So the, actually the science, these Chinese scientists said that the COVID-19 is almost similar to the death from influenza. And we've never seen any lockdown from influenza. It's a death rate almost the same. We've never seen any panic about this thing. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk about the politics of this COVID-19. I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm a scientist. So I'm just focused on science right now. If you want to prevent, do not wait for the vaccine. Because no single vaccine can be effective against all mutation. 
against all viruses. And please do not tell me any vaccine is going to be safe. I'm a toxicologist. So don't, do not convince me that any vaccine is going to be coming safe. Uh, please do, do not even try. Don't to even go there. Don't I, even I'm go not there. Even go beyond that. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about thimerosal, mercury. I'm not going to talk about formal diet. I'm not going to talk about bovine hormones and all of this stuff. Okay. So that's the end of this discussion. So okay. let's not wait for a vaccine. Let's do it today. Simple okay. things in your kitchen cupboard that can Prevent reverse COVID. Be proactive. Yes. Um, lots of, lots and lots of comments on how, wow, like, oh my gosh, no one knows this. Like nobody talks about this stuff. Right. Um, okay. So, um, there was, uh, there was, uh, an, oh, Lizzie said, and I want to, you to so, see this. Um, he cured my dad with diabetes. Okay. I have to just make one simple correction. I do not cure anybody. <laughs> Her dad is my hero. Lizzie actually is my hero because I give her the advice, which I'm just giving everybody right now. And they did cure themselves. I do not, I do not claim to cure any person out of the 10,000 clients that I have. Please do not ever mention the word cure because the medical association do not like to use that word at all. Okay. So we help somebody to actually follow IM, FMLM, integrative medicine, functional medicine, lifestyle medicine. And her dad was taken, I think it was 12, 13 medications and his own physician, stop those medications because he's felt much better his blood sugar was was much better and he's feeling much better lizzie is actually she's she's like you she has a talk show everybody attended her talk show she's she's one of my wellness ambassadors talks to everybody about awesome. her nice to have you here lizzie she's that's amazing. me she's <laughs> that's right <laughs> so here's here's robert new lifestyle oh wow I eat oatmeal in the morning, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. I eat like a rabbit and eat the salad. Throughout the day, I drink at least four liters of alkaline water. And last night, I went to bed early and got up after seven hours. <laughs> wow. That is victory. That is victory, Della. That, that, that is, is victory. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. That is the new Robert Moore that you and I <laughs> That's wonderful. It's awesome because we need happy, Robert yeah. to be alive and well for a long time because he's one of those superheroes, yeah. right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so uh, there was a question if you could repeat the amounts of vitamin D uh, and C and zinc to boost our immune system. Vitamin D, 10,000. And if anybody tell you 10,000 is toxic dose, they don't understand toxicology. The toxic dose for vitamin D3 is 250,000. Somebody actually took 250,000 every day for two and a half years and he did not die. There's not a single death reported 250,000. So I only recommend 10,000 IU. Between eight to 10,000 IU of vitamin D, 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, which is water soluble. The only thing you're gonna get from vitamin C uh, if you if you take ten thousand or or fifteen thousand, it's a little bit of loose stools, and if you take extra vitamin D, nothing will happen to you. I guarantee that. I personally guarantee that it's not toxic dose. And zinc, fifty milligrams. So vitamin D, ten thousand, eight to ten thousand. Vitamin C, forty to fifty milligrams, and zinc is forty to fifty milligrams. Yeah. It's all on my website, academyofwellness.com, under COVID nineteen. A scientific recommendation. These are scientific recommendations. Cannot be refuted by any person who understands science because Amazing. that boosts the immune system and by the way right in the center of the chest here it's called this is called thymus you should also massage the thymus to activate the t cells and nk cells so this is so important to activate because that also boosts the immune system right there that's in the middle of your chest right there okay you need, so, to, uh, you need to repeat that please okay so right in the middle of the chest here okay uh -huh. it, it, there's a very important organ called thymus. So if you actually massage the middle of the chest here like this, five times clockwise, five times counterclockwise, and you do a tapping like monkeys, like this, okay? <laughs> that actually boosts the immune system. And if you have good immune system, you cannot get COVID-19. It's simple. As simple as that. And vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, can, can if every person in Canada did this, we can be cancel this lockdown tomorrow. Seriously. Oh my gosh. But this scientific recommend, like I'm a scientist, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm not like a voodoo thing talking about uh, this or that. This is a scientific recommendations. Okay. This is so, why people need to share this information, yeah. right? I mean, um, you, you, ha okay, what's the worst thing that could happen if exactly. you, you, you do this a couple of times? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm oh my, my God. computer here because I'm okay. out, of, out of battery. Okay. So go ahead. Yes. 
Okay. All right. So, I, I mean, it, it's wonderful. A lot of people are saying thank you. A lot of people are um, just um, saying, wow, this is awesome. I didn't know this. And, um, okay, so there was a question about alkaline water. Now, um, what do you recommend? I mean, a lot of people are drinking bottled water. Um, is that good? What's your take on this? I do not recommend bottled water because the plastic, especially in hot summer days when you keep it in the car, it actually become disintegrated to microplastics and not to mention BPA, which is, which is not healthy. So I do not recommend anything in soft plastic bottles. It's either glass or stainless steel. Now, alkaline water is useful because it actually push our pH to alkaline state, which is healthy state and instead of acidic state. Uh, I do not like to recommend any brands on, on I, I do not look, like to recommend any companies at all, but you can find lots of alkaline water out there. In fact, you can go to any water depot and you get alkaline water. It's not like something that's rare to find. Any place, they would have alkaline water. So yeah, there's lots of other commercial companies that sells alkaline water. You don't have to go through that expense and uh, just keep it in a place where it's either stainless steel or glass that's inact inact inert inactive and drink water at room temperature, not at uh, fridge temperature. I was going to ask you that next. It will disturb the enzymes. And it will actually disturb the enzymes and digestion in the body. It will actually make the, all of the friendly bacteria in our gut becomes unhappy. And remember, we are 95% bacteria in our body. We're only 5% human, by the way. I'm a microbiologist. I can say that. And if some other scientists say we're only 90% bacteria and 10% human, that's their opinion. My opinion is we are 95% bacteria. So you got to make sure that your bacteria and your gut is very happy. You don't want to have pathogenic bacteria. You want to have a healthy bacteria to make a healthy Della. So if bacteria is happy, Della is happy. If the bacteria here is unhappy, Della is unhappy. Simple, easy. How do we have healthy bacteria? Eat lots of fermented food, lots of vegetables, drink lots of kombucha tea, because kombucha is fermented tea. Drink things that is healthy for our body. By the way, alcohol disturbs the microflora in our gut. And so is nicotine, cigarettes. And so is all of the bad stuff that we do. Okay? But you got to make sure that you have a healthy gut. This is called healthy microbiome. In fact, right now, Cleveland Clinic in the States focus more on gut health, on functional medicine, than prescribing pills to their patients. This is one of the largest hospital in the US right now in functional medicine. And I'm so honored to work with some of them, some of the people, doctors there, and also Harvard now focusing on, on functional medicine. Uh, Harvard have an, a specialty now for a physician when they finish their four years basic medical training, they can specialize in IM, FM, LM. And by the way, Della, I do teach this on online courses. It's nine assignments. You, everything you wanted to know about IM, FM, LM, you can actually study it. And then you become very knowledgeable about those kind of disciplines that are going to be the medicines of the future. I can predict this on your show. And we, when we meet again by the year 2030, God willing, if I live this long. I hope we meet before then. <laughs> we're going to plan our next talk. <laughs> our next talk, you're going to see people talking about IM, FM, LM. IM, integrative medicine, FM, functional medicine, and LM, lifestyle medicine. Mm -hmm. People now in the States become board certified in those three specialties that's going to be the medicine of the future so this is not something i'm just talking out of uh, you know hot air this is specialties now that's being self-evident if you mention this uh 20 years ago people say what's im fmlm what are you talking about nobody radio knows about this radio stations exactly, exactly. <laughs> and all of the doctors now were millennial doctors graduating they're actually more open to this than somebody uh, you know in the later part of their career they don't actually believe in all of this prevention mm -hmm. stuff okay mm -hmm. And so, we are learning more and more about this. Yes. Um, and as you were mention, mentioning the microbiome, and I know that there's a re, um, relation between microbiome and your mental health. Oh, 100%. Right. And, that, and as you know, that's really, really close to my heart. Um, yes. And I, I, I do want to have another talk just specially to talk about uh, mental health. Only one talk, Della? I well, think we have 10 sessions on the, actually the first brain is our gut. This is second brain. Mm -hmm. If the gut is healthy, the brain is healthy. There's nobody who have dementia who have healthy gut. That's so far from my literature review, from my study so far. Anybody with an anxiety, depression, dementia, Alzheimer, or Parkinson's, they have unhealthy gut. Once you fix the gut, we're going to fix this. Oh, 
you 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 said it and this is this is what we hear when we hear you are what you eat yes and you are what you don't eat and you are what's eating you mm. so we have to focus on all of the aspects not just what you are what you eat because people take this uh, and they laugh at it okay we know that we hear this a hundred times but but you are what you don't eat like are you eating eight to ten vegetables per day if the answer is no you start to do that it's just go to the wellness iq and start to implement this and then you you are what's eating you for stress by the way dinner time lunch time breakfast time no time to discuss finances and get yourself stressed should not be discussed during because if you have, you're stressed during eating you cannot digest your food mm -hmm. and it's actually going to produce an anxiety that stops digestion it makes the healthy bacteria unhealthy bacteria you understand yeah it will affect our digestive enzymes it will shut down our digestion it's very important not to argue and not to discuss finances during meal time. But unfortunately, this is the only time that family get together and that's they talk about the day and the challenges and the, and the COVID-19 and all of the stresses, that's the anxiety about COVID-19, the lockdown. This is not to be discussed during uh, eating. Or eating or watching the news. Never watch media. <laughs> uh, I, you know, if I have one hour, I can talk about the media and all the false information media about the media. If you watch the thing that I sent you yesterday, there's good news from a physician in Texas that he talks about a very low death rate for this stuff. And he talks about actually using something like uh, something he used for asthma to reverse this COVID-19 successfully before they go into ventilation, before they go into, into death. Now, finally, somebody coming out to talk about the good news. How many times, Della, you heard good news, except on your show, of course, from the media? <laughs> okay. We don't hear good news. We only hear bad news. Yes. And, yeah. and by the way, people dying from any other sources from existing condition, and they call it COVID-19, not only unethical, not only uncalled for, so they get more money, but it's, it's, it's inflating the numbers. It's really inflating the numbers. In China, they do not do that. There is no incentive for Chinese doctors to inflate the numbers. That's why their numbers are so low. And in Iceland, the same thing. But in Italy, people die from diabetes or from cancer. They say oh, they, had, they test for, positive for COVID-19. Uh, okay, you understand? This is what inflates the number. That's what makes it. Uh, oh, and then the media take this now and they say, we have this death. Uh, there's a problem in the USA. There's a problem in Brazil. I talk daily to uh, all my colleagues in Brazil and said, this is all uh, media stuff. And when they talk about the president of Brazil have the COVID-19, because the testing itself is inaccurate. The PCR testing for COVID-19 is 45% accurate. That's so if, if, if you have a very low. Oh, if you have a positive test, it does not mean that you really have uh, any any yeah. problem. I really develop the symptoms. I'm not trying to downplay the, the disease. Yes, there's some people dying from it. All I can tell you, there's, there's actually medication, hydroxychloroquine, and there's a lot of stuff that he used for, uh, like Paul McCourt, for the asthma, that actually stop all of the lung infection. And there's stuff that I talk about, which is the healthiest, with no side effect, vitamin D, vitamin C, and the zinc. Nobody talks about that. I'm the only voice Clark, in the wilderness talking about this <laughs> no people say this, they say well this guy is, is a quack doctor how can how can me a quack and i have three doctor degrees from university of toronto come on i mean it's not even fair to, to mention that name okay so he, here you go vitamin d 10,000 unit vitamin yes. c 40 to 5 yes. 50 milligram and zinc 40 to 50 milligram pound your chest like a gorilla there you okay. go Colleen, you are my gorilla now, Colleen. <laughs> thank you for writing this down because I talk too fast. And thank you for writing this down for the people who are watching this. Thank you so much, Colleen. That's, she, awesome. uh, That's amazing. Yeah. Our, our viewers are the best. Um, Shazza yeah. says, water plus fresh lemon juice and Himalaya salt does alkaline our does that alkaline our body? It does, but alkaline spells with a K, not with a C. It doesn't matter. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, water with lemon juice and Himalayan salt, a pinch of Himalayan salt, a pinch of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, uh, and a pinch of apple cider vinegar does all of this. And then you can put a little bit of uh, stevia in it. It tastes really good. It's Thank you. Thank it, it, you. It tastes really good. Yes. That's yes. Awesome. That's great. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Um, like we're done our hour, Dr. Grant. I could speak to you forever, honestly. Like I would, I, I could, I could um, have you here. So, oh, Ruth says, will you please come on our show for our listeners? Yeah, as you, Ruth and Robert, have a show. 
I'm more than happy to speak with Ruth and Robert. By the way, they are out in a beautiful British Columbia and Okanagan yeah. area, and they do retreats and they are nice. Uh, it's just like they're colleagues and uh, they're just dear to my heart. 100% I'll come to your show. I'll come to your retreats if you invite me to come to Okanagan. And I'll be happy to deliver all of the stuff together with you guys. Yes. So um, for those who don't know Ruth and Robert, they have a show called Brood Awakening. Um, it, fantastic, fantastic yeah. couple. I call them I call them the super, super couple. Uh, yes. I, I, highly recommend you uh listening to their show so thank you so much um and um uh i want thank you patty i just had a real nice compliment from um patty day um okay i'll i'll show it just because why not there we go oh no that's somebody else okay hold on uh there there she is Della, you look stunning and radiant and sweet. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> what I agree with Patty, and that's why I said you're going to live to age 111, just exactly like what you look today. Thank you. And you're not going to age because your skin is so healthy and Thanks. you're so young. Keep it that way. Thanks. It's all about is what goes in here and what goes down there in the gut. Seriously. And the connection between this and this is what makes us healthy. And by the way, happiness comes from laughter. Laughter is the best medicine. Why don't you recommend laughter during this time of anxiety and stress? I had a client who actually, he said he has never laughed for almost like six months. I said, what? You never laughed for six months? He said, yeah, my job is stressful. My wife will give me a hard time. My teenagers are really bad. I said, sir, find a, a mirror in your house and just take your clothes off and look in the mirror. You're going to have the best joke in front of your eyes. <laughs> and he actually laughed at this and he said, I'm doing this now. <laughs> <laughs> it's our whole and exciting medication. Like you gotta laugh, I, laugh at yourself. Like take your clothes off and just laugh. I'm not gonna do it right now. <laughs> you, you're so right, though. Like you know, so many of us take life so seriously. Exactly. Why? Why is that? Why we don't laugh? Why don't walk? Why don't we just drink the water? Basic stuff, common sense stuff, which is uncommon. You've been a wonderful host, Della. You've been. <laughs> You've got all of the stuff out of me. You've got the 40 years squeezed from my head. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's just like a little tiny bit of it. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get you back on here. You can count on that uh, because I have so many questions. And so, um, like I said, uh, mental health is dear and near to my heart. And I really, really want to have a talk um, that can uh, light some uh, information on that for our viewers. That would be fantastic. Be I want to thank you, Dr. Grant. More than happy. If we have like uh, 100 or 1,000 people like Robert Moore who did this transformation like in 10 days, then we are on a mission to actually transform the whole humanity here, and not just in Canada or the US or the Caribbean or Europe, across the worldwide, across the world. We can do this yeah. together. Together, everybody achieve more. That's yes. true. And it's only with sharing this knowledge, this, you know, and, and that's why this is so important to me to bring super superheroes like yourself on the show that can that can talk about what they know, because this is the only way to to spread knowledge. Um, and well, and like, you're the superhero. Part. You are the superhero because without you, I would not be on this show. I would not be reaching. I'm not sure how many people on your show listening to us. 100, uh, 1500. I don't know. In, in our last legend conference, could you imagine we had 150,000 viewers from worldwide? From Toronto alone, we only have about 100. But 150,000 on a virtual conference? Can you imagine this? So every, like, there's 150,000 now in the world know about the Academy of Wellness. Yes. And yes. they follow the Wellness IQ. And yes. that is what we, we got to contribute more and more through all of this, uh, you know, uh, interviews to teach and educate the public. Because again, we are about... We care, we serve, we educate. We do not do the other stuff. That's <laughs> true. Yes, yeah. that's exactly it. We um, inform, inspire, motivate, change. And uh, you motivate the wellness. And I so appreciate that, uh, Dr. Grant. Thank Can you. Can I offer your viewers and listeners a gift right now? Oh, my gosh. Yes, please. Okay, if you go to academyofwellness.com, complete the wellness IQ, I'm going to commit to them a half an hour through Zoom or through phone calls or they come and see me. At no, at no cost at all. And then they can squeeze my brain like we did. And then uh, there's no cost at all. But it's just like a public service. It's a humanitarian service. This is what we're all about. If you finish that, it doesn't matter what the score is. And this invitation is also open to you, Della. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Thank you so, so much. Oh, 
that's awesome. See, that's why they call you the doctor with the heart of gold, right? That's why they call you that. Amazing. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate this. And and I, I, I want to stress that people, please go to academyofwellness.com and uh, fill up that IQ uh, for your wellness. Find out more information. Find out how healthy you are. Find out how you can benefit from this. Find out how you can live your best life. That's ultimately our purpose here, right? Thank you. So and any I'm of your viewers, by the way, Della, any of your viewers who have seen our online courses and they mentioned Della, 10% discount on their online courses. And this, this do not tell all my existing students about this because they're going to tell me why I come. Because <laughs> you're not on Della's show. <laughs> well, mention Della and get 10% exactly. off. Mention Della. Yeah. That's how we do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Grant, I'm going to give you a couple of more minutes. And if you want to say anything, you want to leave the audience with those whatever you want. Um, I want you all to basically um, follow my six L's. Love, learn, listen, let go, and leave a legacy. If each one of us did those, then we have a whole world full of happy people, healthy people, and the media cannot transform any of our minds if we have reached that kind of conclusion. Do you agree with me, Della? I totally. Thank you. Totally. The Thank six you. Bells. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. 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 Thank you. This has been so illuminating for me and so much fun. Uh, I totally, totally appreciate you. I, I, I love you, Dr. G. Thank you so much for being Thank you so much, Della. And for everyone who tuned in to watch us today, thank you so much for all the yes. comments, all yes. the questions. You have made this loads of fun. And I hope you take what you want and leave the rest. And as always, this has been Bella's voice, hoping to spark your soul. Till next time, take care.